Posting Transactions, Part 1. We saw how we record value coming into the firm and value leaving the firm. Value coming into the firm will be recorded as a debit into some account, and value leaving the firm will be recorded as a credit into some other account. We saw two types of expenditures, current expenditures and capital expenditures. Value coming into the firm may be consumed quickly or just have been consumed, in which case it's called a current expenditure. Or it may stay within the assets of the firm for several years. In that case, it's called a capital expenditure. For both type of value coming into the firm, the same rule applies. Value coming into the firm is a debit somewhere. If it is difficult to remember, well, remember that we created the debtor's account and one column at first in the debtor's account, a column called debit, to record an IOU coming into the firm as a payment from a client. This IOU could not be recorded into the cash account, otherwise it would have created all sorts of difficulties. So we recorded it in a new page in a debit column. Every transaction is made of two movements, value entering the firm and value with the same measurement, monetary measurement, leaving the firm. Example, the firm buys a machine and gets credit from the supplier. Well, he has the firm, he has the supplier, which belongs to the rest of the world. At the time of the transaction, a machine enters the firm, enters the assets of the firm, and an IOU leaves the firm. So, after having been recorded in the journal, every transaction will entail two entries. One in debit somewhere, and one in credit elsewhere. Whence the term double entry accounting. Double entry accounting. Why the rule value coming in is a debit is counterintuitive and even looks wrong. Well, that has to do with the bank, because you and me have no personal double entry accounting system. We are accustomed to receiving reports from our bank on our bank account. When we have money at the bank, our account is in credit. And when we take money to our account at the bank, it is credited. So this really looks just the opposite to the rule I just expressed. But the bank does not send us an extract of our own personal double entry accounting system. Usually it doesn't exist. But it sends us an extract from its, its accounting system, which is mirror to ours if we had one. When we have money at the bank, we are a creditor of the bank. And when we put more money into our bank account at the bank, we are even more creditors. Our account at the bank is credited. That's why it looks contrary to the rule I just expressed, value coming into our firm is a debit. But this rule is correct. So, in the accounting system of the firm, there will be plenty of pages regarding value, in or out, of the same nature. Some will record assets, some will record what's called liabilities. Let's look at an example. When the firm borrows 100,000 euros from a bank, we saw that banks have various activities, retail banks, they manage checking accounts, saving accounts, they receive deposits, and they also extend loans. And we also talked about investment banks. Here we deal with the retail bank lending money. So a bank lends 100,000 euros of cash to the firm F. The transaction is this, 100,000 euros of cash leave the bank and enter the firm, and a loan contract, which is one sort of IOU, leaves the firm and goes into the bank. 
the 100,000 euros will be a debit in the cash account and the cash account is an asset of the firm it is things that the firm owns and the contract uh, worth 100,000 euros will be a credit in a bank loans account of F accounting system and that's called a liability of F. All accounts will have exactly the same layout a big heading with the name of the account, a second row of headings for each column, a column date, a column description, a column debit, and a column credit. Professional accountants, they usually add another column with some code number for the entries, but we shall not be concerned with that in this introductory course.